Welcome to Milwaukee Notes, where we showcase a variety of artists and industry professionals from the Milwaukee music scene. Today, we explore a new program called Backline, aimed to push local musicians and the music community to the next level. Then, we ride along with Milwaukee-based Dreamhouse as we go into their studio and they give us their views on local music as well as the insights to what it's like being in a band in the Milwaukee music scene. Last, we sit down and talk with Abby J, a local singer-songwriter, as she tells us about her journey and her viewpoint as an artist in the local scene. First on the show, Milwaukee Notes visits 88.9. Their efforts are not going unnoticed and are showing their results each day towards the local music scene. We know the talent is here and we were wondering like, what is it that, that we need to do to help some of these artists break out and really help Milwaukee uh, become known as a more vibrant music city. So it's helping the artists be artists, but also helping sh reshape the image of the city through music. From having its own Milwaukee music radio channel to having local bands play in their studio, 88.9 has become a huge driving force and supporter of local music for the past decade. And we know from research, not just ours, but research that's done all around the world, um, what, what impact music can have in attracting young people to the city. We know that uh, the companies in our city um, are really trying to attract that young talent and are having difficulty doing that. We feel by helping Milwaukee become known as a music city, we can help our companies attract that young talent that they really need. Glenn Kleiman is their executive director and knows the importance of local music all too well. The excellent minds for both 88.9 and Generator came together to create a program called Backline. It is a unique program that will give bands resources to further their craft and skills, as well as taking their support of Milwaukee music to the next level. Generator is a startup accelerator based here in Milwaukee and they're one of the top 15 accelerators in the country. So they're very successful. They've done a great job of taking businesses from this level to this level. And that's really what we wanna do with musicians. We started thinking about how do we fund, can we educate? Uh, and then we started looking at a couple of different models around the country. And, and then coincidentally, Generator said that they wanted to do an accelerator for Milwaukee musicians. So it was a tremendously wonderful coincidence. These two groups thought hard on how they can push Milwaukee music. They realized what the first step was and seized the opportunity. Backline is a program to help fund and educate Milwaukee musicians. We know that we have a lot of talent in the city. We've been supporting Milwaukee music for forever and we want to do that even more. And what we're doing with Backline is two things. One is uh, the workshops. We'll be holding at least four workshops a year, bringing in professionals from the music industry and helping to educate uh, Milwaukee musicians about the business side of music. You know, how do you book a tour? How do you make money off of your music? Not just by um, performing or by streaming your music, but by licensing your music and doing other things that you could monetize your, your, you know, your art. And artists are artists. They want to create their art. And what we want to do is help educate them around how to navigate the increasingly complex industry of, of music. The other part is a 12-week accelerator for the four most promising artists. And along with that accelerator comes a grant for each artist or band of $20,000. These artists will be uh, matched with mentors from the industry who will help them create a plan for their career and also help them execute that plan for their career. We asked, like, what are we missing? What are the gaps? And two main things came out. One was funding, and the other is the, the knowledge of the business side of music. So those are the two things that we're trying to attack and fill those gaps with this program. 88.9 has reached out to their resources to ensure that the workshops are hosted by credible industry professionals. The end goal is for the public to know about the business side and how to incorporate it into the artist part of music. And when we select um, the people that are going to be speaking at the workshops, we're reaching out to industry professionals all over the country. We're not going to be selecting the, those that get the grants. We're going to have a panel of, of music industry professionals coming into Milwaukee and deciding on who gets those $20,000 grants. They're people from record labels, management, booking agents, uh, radio, uh, streaming services, legal services. 
and all the people that service, you know, artists. We are looking for the most promising artists for the Accelerator program. So whether it's a hip hop artist, a country artist, a heavy metal artist, an indie rock, indie pop, whatever it might be, we're just looking for the people that are the most talented and the most driven to become successful. And then for the workshops, you know, we want everybody from the city to know about Backline. We want everybody to participate because we feel like we can, you know, lift everybody, regardless of what neighborhood they're from, or what genre they're in. There's talent all over the place, and we want to lift everybody up. The program will seek out talented bands and give them a grant that will be used to execute plans tailored by industry professionals. In addition, Backland also has free workshops for all to enjoy. We want everybody to come to these workshops. We feel like the workshops are a way to reach everybody, whereas the Accelerator will only reach a few. The workshops will be about the business side of music, so um, how to make money off of the music you're creating, how to book a gig or a tour, how to build a brand. The research 889 and Generator completed examine other music scenes, their successes and shortcomings. Backline is the result of countless hours of exploration and is a unique, exciting push for local musicians. When we look around the world about what other cities have done to uh, really encourage the development of music in their cities, we look at a lot of different things that they've done. There's something as simple as reserving a place in front of a music venue for the bands to unload, where they don't get a ticket. It's, they have like a, a loading zone just for the bands. And something just as simple as that, or noise ordinances, where you're allowed to play until a certain time, tax benefits, uh, affordable housing. There are all kinds of things that cities are doing to really make their cities um, friendly for musicians. But we also heard other things that, that we are lacking that we could use. All ages venues is certainly something that's come up. Rehearsal space is something that's come up. So there's a lot of things that we can do in, as a community to support our local musicians. We're taking this first step. We hope it's the first of many steps. We don't know where this will lead, but there's certainly a roadmap created by other cities. But we want to do what we can do right now, and we think this is a really powerful first step. More information on the program and where you can find the community workshops can be found at backlinemke.org. Backline is a unique opportunity and is a great asset to our musical culture here in Milwaukee. I uh, started like sophomore year of high school just recording bands whenever I could and then by the time I graduated I knew that I could do this for a living so I moved to Milwaukee, got to know the scene, went to shows, I played in a couple bands. Milwaukee has a great healthy scene. This is actually my first band. I'm the only one in the band who's never been in a band before. We've been a band for about two years now and we have accomplished so many things, met so many people, have been to a lot of great places and um, I still tell people to this day I never thought I'd be fronting an alternative rock band. So I kind of idolized my brother, just would hang around his band practices, kind of got me interested in the drums. So when they weren't playing, I'd just kind of hop on my brother's friend's drum set and pick up the basics there, and then I bought my own drum set, and then kind of started from there. I think I started my first band in seventh grade. I would say it's just a really great creative outlet. It brings a sense of community. You see the same kind of people at shows that are um, diehard supporters, and you know those are the kind of people that you like to build relationships with because they're very supportive and very open to creativity. Um, I think it's important to kind of support that too and uh, an overall music community. I think that it's a great place for kids to go with that's safe and hang out with their friends. I think music helps a lot of people deal with a lot of things and I've had kids come up to me at shows that they really like our band and music in general is important for kids nowadays to heal and cope with a lot of the emotional roller coasters that are going on in their lives. And also playing music for them too, it gives them an outlet to like look up to people and then ask questions and then potentially do that themselves and I think that that's better than some of the other things that kids are doing nowadays. 
it's hard because there's nowhere to play. Back when I was in a band over there, we were playing VFWs, uh, comedy clubs, boys and girls clubs. There was there was a healthy scene. A lot of people were coming out because there was nothing to do up there. So I think having really small communities, these random little cities, and just a bunch of people show up because yeah, there's like nothing to do. the real younger crowd they're kind of stuck on like iPads and that's cool and everything but like I think we're missing that even like Warp Tour they're they're closing or they're stopping the full Warp Tour this year I read in a, in a billboard interview with Kevin Lyman the owner he's saying that they're they're missing the the really young crowd and I I think that can just be applied to anywhere really I think Milwaukee I think we could use that, and, and it's hard with without all ages venues. That's the age where you, you fall in love with music. Mostly the difference in cities is just like what genre is popular in that city, but having a good quality venue that's all ages is so important. We've been going through a lot of in Milwaukee, that is, uh, just a lot of venues getting shut down and a hard time kind of finding that new home to book shows at. So I think just kind of establishing a healthier supply of venues. We're just like you. We're just like all the other kids. We're, we're, we're relatable not only that, but we're also reachable. But I think about local music, it, it is about the fact that you're, you're, you know, you're the same. You're on the same level, um, the same playing fields, and I guess are more reachable. They can talk to you about, about music and, and life. So shows are a great way to network. I try to go to shows that, you know, that Dreamhouse isn't playing, and I'll see friends that I recorded, or videographers or photographers. So that's a, just an excellent way to just talk to people and exchange business cards or numbers. I mean, the band is also a business. Uh, there's a lot of marketing involved, like how to promote a release. Play anywhere. Play bars, play birthday parties, play just literally anywhere, backyards, anything that you can do just to get comfortable in the crowd um, and go from there. Talk with other bands um, that you may know or talk with friends. And it's, it honestly, it all comes down with networking and that just helps it helps to just talk to people and ask questions. I get bands all the time that come in here, they're like, who should we go through for this? Or where should we play? Who, what band should we play with? And so it's always nice to just kind of build the community. Finally on Milwaukee Notes, we are joined by Abby J. Abby is a singer, a guitar player, and a songwriter. From a loving and supportive family, she has always strived to push her artistic endeavors, auditioning for shows like The Voice and American Idol. I have been singing since, literally since before I could talk. My dad was the one that really got me into it. He actually used to sing a slower version, his version of Penny Lane by The Beatles to me every night. And I started playing guitar when I was 13, and kind of found my niche, um, but singing is really my passion. Everybody that sings has their own individual instrument, like they have their own sound. I always like to inspire people. Abby has taken her music to many venues throughout Milwaukee. Her insights to the scene come from first-hand experience. Milwaukee is very diverse, not only in music, but also just in the different cultures within Milwaukee and I feel like the music definitely reflects that as well. I think that more places could definitely have open mic or just live bands play. A lot of times, especially downtown, you see DJs a lot, but you don't see a lot of live performances unless it's bigger name groups. So I feel like they definitely could expand um, as far as getting different local bands to play for different venues as well. I think that could definitely be improved. 
I'm constantly running into different musicians, people that I know. I'll be with, you know, my band or um, different musicians, and they'll be like, oh, hey, and run into other musicians, and it's definitely a small walkie for sure. I think that more places could definitely have open mic or just like um, live bands play. As far as the 21 and over restriction, it definitely is limiting. Me only being 19, I have played at bars before, but it's definitely something that I feel like owners are a little bit more hesitant towards just because obviously the drinking age is 21. But I think that if they were to expand it to all ages, that could definitely help open up a larger group of musicians. I know musicians also that are younger than me that are very, very talented that don't have the venues to play at. Local shows are a place where everyone can come and meet, where those of similar interests come together and are surrounded by music. Milwaukee is fortunate to be a very big part in the whole Wisconsin music scene. You will never know, cause it's something he will never tell. And it's not mine to tell, and it's not yours to find out. But if you ever do find out what it is he has to tell, it was meant to be, and it's him the one who will set you free. You will never see, cause it's something she will not reveal. You're locked in a cage, but I'm trying to find the words to heal. And if I ever do find out where it is she keeps the key, that's the final piece, and it's her the one who will let you dream. And once you found the final Beneath your feet.